Last time we got our guy walking around and he can see us with his visual perception, but he loses us quite quickly and I don't know what he's doing right now. As I was saying, he loses us quite quickly. All we have to do is, oh, I'm actually stuck in the corner. <sighs> we just have to sidestep him. That's it. And then it goes away. So let's fix that. Hello everybody and welcome back to Horror Game From Scratch. As I was saying, last time we made it so he can see us, we made his vision very narrow, but if we sidestep him, he just stops trying to get to us. Or if we go around the corner, he's like, that person never existed. So what we're gonna do is we are going to expand our tree to include some information that will let it so he can still be in an aggravated state and look for us. Right now we have does not see player and does see player and then we go into a chase sequence so what we're going to do instead is we're going to disconnect this right branch and we're going to keep the does see player thing there oh well i'm trying to move it and i'm failing there we go uh and instead of a sequence for chasing we're going to pull out and we're going to get a selector so what the selector is going to do is it's going to now choose between i see the player so i'm going to chase them i.e. this one, and I don't see the player, but I'm in an aggravated state. So we need to add additional conditioning to our roots, and you'll see that I am gonna start spreading these out. So to start, uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove this decorator that does see player BBC. Let's go ahead and just click on the blue part and press delete, and it should go away. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new boolean on our blackboard that is called aggravated so we're going to type in aggravated like that and back over in the behavior tree what we're going to do is out of our selector and what we're going to do is on the walk around we're going to right click add decorator it's going to be a blackboard decorator uh and click on the actual blue part so it's selected and what we're gonna do is first off, observer aborts, we're gonna abort ourselves. Uh, if you guys don't remember, that basically means this root, if something changes, abort this root. Specifically, if a condition that means that we can be in the root changes, to be exact. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the blackboard key of aggravated. And so it's a little weird because obviously we have is set and is not set. Um, for a Boolean, is set is true and is not set is not true or false. So if aggravated is false, go ahead and run our walk around condition. However, what are we gonna do if we are aggravated and we don't see the player? So go ahead and right click your selector. Let's go ahead and add that decorator. Uh, click on the blue part. We're gonna make sure is aggravated or aggravated is set. Uh, and we're going to abort self in case we do come out of that aggravated condition because sometimes after you know an extended period of time of being idle but aggro we'll set that back down to not being aggravated anymore oh and we got to rename these sorry i'm getting ahead of myself it is really late at night is not aggravated space dash space bbc the right one is aggravated space dash you know what i meant so the first choice are we aggravated? If we are not, walk around. If we are and we see the player, go ahead and move to the player. So now we're actually gonna create two new routes, but before we do that, let's handle some additional logic in our AIC or AI controller, because this is where our perception is at. So if you remember, we have an on-target perception updated. We check to see if what, we, what was updated was the player and whether or not we see them or not. If we went down the no route, basically all we said was, hey, clear player character and set us to no longer running. So instead, we're gonna go ahead and change this. We are going to still clear player character, uh, but we're not gonna remove the, we are gonna remove the run request because we're gonna still be aggravated. We're just gonna not know where the player is and we're gonna start searching. And there's things we can use to help with our search. If we go over here to the AI stimulus, this is basically the breakdown of everything we got from this uh, target perception updated. You'll see that we have a stimulus location. 
The good news about the stimulus location is it's the last no well in this case it would be the last known place the player was because whenever he no longer saw us the updated location would be where we were and we can use that to our advantage so what we're going to do is go to the behavior tree blackboard oh we already have it we're going to use this target location one um we're going to go back to the ai controller and we are going to get blackboard the bottom one with the little blue object reference thing. Let's go ahead and if you have your comment here as well, just make a whole bunch of space. And we are going to set value as a vector because in this case, it is going to be a location. The vector value is going to be this um, stimulus location. So we'll go ahead and drag that over. Now let's go ahead and add some pins to make it look less awful. Control Shift S. And then out of key name, we're just going to type in make literal. Click make literal name, get a little extra space here, move our pin over. And again, you can either just type in target location or if you don't trust yourself, go over to your blackboard, go to target location, press F2, control C, go back to your AIC and paste it into make literal name, control shift S and compile. So. Now what we've done is we've lost the player, so we've cleared that object. But what we did do is remember the last place we saw them. So now on our behavior tree, what we're gonna do is we're aggravated and we're gonna go ahead and pull out another sequence. And on this sequence, go ahead and right click and add a decorator for blackboard. Click on that sequence, or that, I'm sorry, that blackboard and we are going to board ourselves. Uh, the key query is going, or I'm sorry, the blackboard key is going to be um, player character and specifically is not set, which makes this node name going to be does not see player space dash space BBC for blackboard condition, not the other thing. And because we no longer see the player character, what we're going to do is we are going to move to um, the target location. So the only way we'll ever get down this route is if we were aggravated, which means at some point player character was set. Otherwise, we couldn't get down this, this, this branch. So we see the player and they are no longer in our vision, but... We know because in our perception, we know that whenever we lose them, we are saving their last known location. And we are going to run to that last known location. Also, real talk, I feel so exhausted. My eyes are heavy. My train of thought is slow. If this episode is hard to follow, Give me a break, I'm trying. Then what we're actually gonna do is pull out and do another sequence. So why are we doing another sequence? Well, within this sequence, we need to move to the last known location. If we still don't see the player, then what we need to do is start looking for that player. So what we're gonna do is, if you remember, I think we created this task, didn't we? Yeah, the task random location. So we're still aggravated, we're still sprinting, uh, and we're going to use our random location again. So we're going to do a minimum of like 100 and a maximum of like 300. That's a pretty small area. But remember, it's running to the last place they saw you. And now it's going to start looking around. So we're going to look, start looking around. Target location is ourself, of course. Let's go ahead and center this. And what's cool about uh, something we can do with a sequence, I think you can do it with you might be able to do it with a selector, I don't remember. Regardless, we can right click this sequence and we can actually do add decorator loop. So now what this is gonna do is when it gets to here, it knows that it needs to run this sequence three times. Um, but what we need to do on top of that, actually we don't even need to, I forgot it's being set up up here. <laughs> Sorry, that was a lot what I just said. I was going to say we need to make sure it abandons the loop if it sees the player. However, I then remembered it's that's happening above it, which is a higher priority. So it will abandon the loop if this gets abandoned, which as we, as we set, it is a boarding self. So 
We're good there. Go to the last known location and then look around right now. It's set to three times. And if you don't find them, we need a little bit extra logic. So I'm gonna move these over just a little bit. Now you can do this however you want. You can set it as a timer, you can set it. Basically there's a million ways you can set this logic. However, what I'm gonna do is after the three loops, we are going to create a new task that relaxes the enemy, basically says don't be aggro anymore. And how I'm going to do that, at the top we're gonna to go to new task. Uh, we're gonna use the blueprint base. Uh, open up our tasks folder. I'm gonna delete all of that except for the BT task underscore. And I am going to make this enemy relaxer. It opened on the other screen. Let's pull that over. Uh, remember, any uh, task you give an AI has to start with event receive. Oh, event receive execute. Because remember, oh, the one with the AI at the end, by the way. Because remember, this is just an event graph, which means we need an event. And in this case, the event is receiving the task to begin with. Then what we're going to do is go to the variables and we are going to just type in aggravated because that's what we put on the blackboard. Uh, we're going to open the eyeball and I know on the blackboard it's a Boolean, but remember that within the uh, task, it's a black board key selector. And we will hit compile and save. Then what we'll do is set blackboard value as bool. We'll plug that in. Go ahead and straighten that with Q. We will take aggravated as our key. And then the value will be false because we're going to be setting it to false. We will then finish execute with a success. Very simple task, but much needed for our logic. And we will pop out of that task, go back to the behavior tree. And now we will call enemy relaxer. And there you go. Well, actually, no, not quite yet. As you can see, the uh, key we have in there aggravated is targeted towards self actor. So we need to click on this and then change aggravated to be targeting aggravated. By the way, these names don't have to match. It's just easier to keep track of what you're doing that way. We'll hit Control Shift S. And there you go. Let's take a look at the logic. This selector is seeing if we're aggravated. So we're not aggravated. Oh, but we walked around and now we are. So we're gonna go down this tree. Do we see the player? If so, move straight to the player. If we don't see the player, instead go to the last known location because that's what we're setting in our perception, right? We lost the player, so let's go, let's go find them at the last known location. Uh, then we are gonna search around in a small area we're gonna loop three times or however you feel that you wanna put in there. And then we're going to relax our aggravated state, which is going to abandon this entire tree because you can see is aggravated is going to uh, observer aborts itself, which will send us back to the selector and it will go back down this path where it will continue its old unaggravated self. Do you see why this is like 10 episodes already? <laughs> So the only issue I'm going to have, which you guys, if you've been balancing your enemy, won't have this issue. Uh, I'm going to fix it really quick. Is remember how slow mine's turning? I'm going to fix that really quick. Make this a little bit harder to get away from. Okay, he should rotate a hell of a lot faster now. I put it at 240. We'll see what, what that's like. Anyway, let's go ahead and plop down and hit play. Now you'll know, even if we get outside of his vision, it's going to be a lot harder to get away from him. So right now he doesn't see us. Now he does. Oh, sir. What the? Hold on. Let's take a look at the behavior tree. What's going on? So he never is exiting this left, this left tree. I told you this is a great debugging tool because that reminded me. Well, why does it run this tree? Aggravated's not set. Oh yeah, why would that be? Well, because in our AIC, we are no, we're not updating the aggravation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take run. We're gonna move it down a little bit, which by the way, in case you're lost, this is the perception, right? Uh, in the AIC and we're in the does see them branch. So 
uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm just going to copy paste this Blackboard reference, or you can just uh, type in get Blackboard. Uh, I'm going to pull out, I'm going to set value as bool for Boolean. I'm going to pull this out. Now we want the bool to be true. I'm going to plug this into the run request. And then we are going to make literal name. And of course, that name is going to be aggravated. Now he'll actually leave that branch. See, debugging in real time. All right, let's hit play. All right, does he see? Oh, he sees us. We lost him. Why did we lose him? Let's take, let's take a look. Whoa, what's he trying to do here? Uh, player character is set and it's flashing like crazy. Does not see player, also flashing like crazy. And if we go to his position, he definitely doesn't see us. I will take a look at this, one sec. Okay, I think I figured out what the problem is, and I'll be honest, I don't know how to fix it, but I'm not going to be that YouTuber. I'm not going to sit here and pretend I know what I'm telling you. In this case, I genuinely don't know what the issue is. Well, that's a lie. I know the issue. I don't know how to fix it. Um, so right now, what we're doing is, if my theory is correct, because we don't want our enemy to be able to rotate instantly, um, so orient rotation and movement. So if we go ahead and uncheck this and just use the desired rotation and hit compile and save, I believe it'll fix the issue because I think what's happening is the controller is rotating and then it's confused and going back to, um, where the pawn's facing instead. Yup. Yeah. Okay. It was going back to where the pawn was facing instead. And the issue ended up being that it wouldn't do anything because every frame it was going between the pawn's rotation and its desired rotation. And as you can see, he's a lot fucking harder to get away from <laughs> whenever he's your movement speed and you've got nowhere to hide. See how simply making him move to the target location where he lost you is significantly harder to get away from? Like, I can kind of do it, but then he sees me. Oh, and, oh, by the way, during debugging, I turned the vision up. So that's another reason it's very hard for him to uh, see me. So, okay, I might have told you bad information, and I want to be very clear. I think if we use the, the desired rotation on the controller and then set the rotation rate, it still does both. I could be wrong, but have you noticed that he's not snapping? So I think that might fix it. And legitimately, if you're good at this stuff, and you know what's going on and I'm incorrect, leave a comment, let me know. I just want everyone on board with what's going on. I hope my theory made sense. Hopefully it's not too short of an episode. I'm gonna end it there. I hope you guys learned something in this one. I hope it wasn't too confusing. And uh, in the next one, hopefully I have a bit more energy and I'm able to, to work a little harder for you guys. But like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.